disgusting moments on paternity court. It's a text message, Your Honor. Uh, I received wasn't supposed to come to me and a word was misspelled. It was a word. A few days later, she had on a tight clothing, a, you know, a little skirt, breast out. And next thing you know, one thing led to another. We started flirting with each other back and forth. Things just escalated from there. This time around in court, Taylor Holthouse is here to find out who her three-month-old son, Zayden's father is. According to her, it's either someone she had a sexual relationship with or her mother's boyfriend. And he was talking about um, having sex and going somewhere. I snuck out of my grandma's house that night and we went to a park. And what happened at the park? We had sexual relations. <laughs> So you got a phone call while you're at your grandmother's house? Yes, Your Honor. This guy is an absolute weirdo. Imagine having this type of relationship with your partner's daughter. Judge Lauren and everyone in the courtroom was beyond disgusted upon hearing this altercation, and Mr. Shinewald said this. He had kind of manipulated both of us, saying that I told her about what we did, and I never said anything, and she said that he told her about what we did, and he never said anything. And who confessed? Actually, I confessed. You did? Yes, ma'am. Were you also still sleeping with her mother during that time? Yes. Oh! So apparently after she sent that text message, Mr. Shinwald called her and asked if she wanted to have a good time, and she readily jumped at the chance. They went to a park and did the deed there. This went on for about six months. Did she ever almost catch you? Yes. Oh. And when she did, what she, happened? She, um, she caught me standing in front of her my pants unzipped. She was really furious and upset and we basically got into huge arguments and fights about things that were going on. And Judge Lauren straight up told this dude that this type of behavior was beyond weird. Mr. Shinewald remarks that he got caught having intimate relations with Taylor, which rightfully caused Taylor's mother to lash out at Mr. Shinewald. I had to sneak out and go tell Mr. Shinewald that it could be his, maybe. You were honest? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Chenault, I'm guessing at this point, hoping, she throws you out at this point. <laughs> Taylor was very honest and told Judge Lauren that there could have been two possibilities, Mr. Shinwald and another man. What makes this situation even worse is that Mr. Shinwald just had a child with Taylor's mother. He's admitted he's been carrying on a sexual relationship with your daughter, at the same time, he was in a sexual relationship with you? Yes. Did they deny it at first? Yes. But it... your intuition told you something was going on? Right, because my daughter was acting funny. Things get more messy when Miss Holthouse reveals while they were messing around unbeknownst to her. Her mother was pregnant with her sister, Mr. Shinwald's daughter. So her sister and her son are just eight months apart. See, this is tearing you apart. How long have you two been together? We had originally met 20 years ago. Wow. If you've known her on and off for 20 years, then you knew Miss Holthouse when she was a baby. So you watched her grow up. Mr. Shinwald is an absolute disgrace and a terrible person, as ruined a 20-year relationship with Miss Holthouse to get with her daughter. What terrifies me the most is that Mr. Shinwald literally saw Taylor as a baby and watched her grow up. Keeps bring fighting and arguing with me over what happened. Um, I'm not allowed to actually have any for real physical contact with Zayden. Because if I do, she complains that I'm being too fatherly towards him instead of being a grandfather towards him. What makes this situation worse is that Mr. Shinwald and Miss Bogardus have been together for over 20 years, meaning he actually saw Miss Holthouse grow up and even helped raise her. Now, this is just straight up creepy. Mr. Shinwald admits he does look a bit like his daughter. If right now, Miss Holthouse, I could snap you in two. And Mr. Chanel, your body language and that twitch your mouth does. It's shocking that after everything, all of them are still living under the same roof. But Miss Bogardus set some pretty strict rules about how much contact the two were supposed to have, which was almost non-existent. I want to know if both of you say you're not sleeping together anymore and haven't slept together since September, we have access and we can take a lie detector test. It 
that sure would calm your wife to be fears. Judge Lauren has done this for many years, and she can sense when someone is uneasy or lying. Judge Lauren announces that the two will take a lie detector test to determine if what they said is true in regard to when they were last intimate with each other. Just to go back to being normal. <laughs> to where... I'm not sure what normal is for you, but Jerome, I'm ready for the results. Judge Lake asks them if they'd be willing to take a lie detector test to see if they're actually telling the truth, and they both decline. With that, she knows that revealing the paternity results is the only thing left to do here. You are not We're living in Georgia, then he moved back to Indiana and got a room or a shared a room with Amber. He had nowhere to go, so I took him in. Excuse me, Your Honor, but his uh, sister lives there. He has numerous friends in Indiana. His sister would not I live, live there. With her He's at a, all. He works. He could have lived other places than with her. He's lived with her off and on for the past three years. It was really? Really? Amber Marsh is in court today to prove to her ex, Matthew Zach Belding, and his mother that her three-year-old daughter is Mr. Belding's child. They have accused her of cheating on him with his father and think he's the actual father. Just when I moved back to Indiana, there was a bunch of my friends that had said she had slept with them no, after she had me. slept with excuse me. Excuse me, Your Honor. Excuse no, that's me too, not Your it. Honor. She's that's already had it. one man tested before Zach. I didn't have him tested. He had her tested. I told him not because to do it. Because she told us that it was a I possibility have, to begin I with. I have all the proof of that. I know who the father of my daughter is and is this man right Mr. Here. Belding reveals that his doubt stems from the fact that multiple of his friends have told him that they have gotten intimate with Miss Marsh. Additionally, Miss Marsh let Mr. Belding's father live with her on and off over the period of three years. He came back to Indiana to give birth to Jordan. She Excuse had another me, man. I never said she, that. Can I, can I finish? I she had another that. man there while the baby was being delivered no, that was, was her no fiance at the time. There was no no one else in the room except for my mother and, and her boyfriend course. fiance I'm sorry that you're you're uh, was your there a man at the up. hospital Miss Marsh that claimed to be your fiance when you no. have Mr. Belding's doubts lie on the simple fact that Miss Marsh let his father stay with her even though he could have stayed anywhere else but she clarifies that no one was willing to take her in and she wasn't about to let someone who had been like a father to her live out on the streets so you all were in a relationship boyfriend and girlfriend no, not yes. really. off, off and on so it was off and on for Just years a sexual thing but during this time you were together that's when you got pregnant yeah. No. It was after I had I had moved to Georgia to live with him and his dad to and now, join the military. That was totally a surprise too. I didn't know she was her, coming. Her dad, my, his my dad, dad did that. Exactly. Miss Belding says that she would call them out of the blue and ask if they could watch Jordan. But Miss Marsh clarifies they were harassing her, which led her to change her number and move far away from them. Another man in your mind signed the birth certificate. I have it right here. Let me yeah, see. This is what I was told. I didn't. I didn't see a no picture. Because he believes everything his mommy says. Because he's a mommy's boy. No, there is. There's <clears> no. <throat> person listed as father on the birth certificate. That's because she lies to us about everything, but there was a man no, who he, introduced you to she, well, she did. She's hallucinating. This case was just extremely messy, as Mr. Belding claims that another signed the birth certificate. But when Judge Lauren took another look at the birth certificate, it showed that there was nobody listed as the father, which was beyond concerning. Did your father ever say anything to you about them having a relationship? Oh, he's told me they slept in the bed together multiple times. Yes. In my three-bedroom apartment, it was different rooms. And then when we lived at my mom's, I worked third shift and he worked first. We slept in the same bed, but not together. <gasps> see, now see, see together. who's lying, see how the story so wait changes. A minute, so wait. Miss Belding adds that regardless of that, she did see a man at the hospital during the birth. Miss Marsh cuts in saying that she probably hallucinated it because she was drunk out of her mind that day. Miss Belding obviously denies it. Ever share a bed with Miss Marsh? Kind of. I mean, the schedules between her mother's schedule, my schedule, and Amber's schedule, there was always someone there to take care of the baby. So, how do you feel if your son is accusing you of being the father of Ms. Marsh's daughter? It's, it's a little uh, frustrating. Um, Judge Lauren was just sick of hearing this crazy mess. So she asked Mr. Belding's father whether he had ever been in the same bed as Miss Marsh, and he literally said, kinda. Mr. Belding's father felt disrespected that his son would ever say such things. Grandma paid for me to go there because she knew how much Zach meant to me. Now he means nothing. When you stay out of a daughter's life for three years, 
You only come over three times, and the one time you do that's come a lie. over, that's a you lie too, Your Honor. She dropped her off to me three times. The baby didn't even know me, and she just. But dropped that's her not off my fault. You water. never call or ask about her. Oh, really? I thought you just said I harassed you so much you had you to move, and now I don't me. call. Judge Lake then calls Mr. Belding and asks him about the situation, and he says that they never slept together, but rather slept in the same bed in turns because all of them had different work schedules. He finds it a little frustrating that his son is accusing him. And got together. We and you two been together how long? Four, Four months. months. Four, Four months, months he's been a dad to a three-year-old. So, Mr. Holt, please tell me about me. the relationship you mm. built with George. It's just an everyday thing. I mean, you gotta be a dad to do everything, you know what I mean? You gotta get a job, take care of the baby, play with her, I play every day with her. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. The judge then calls Miss Marsh's boyfriend, Mr. Hull, to the stand, and he says that he's been helping raise Jordan with Miss Marsh. Miss Belding cuts in, saying that even though she had a boyfriend, she slept with her son a couple of months ago. Feeling like Mr. Belding, you're, you, do you feel like you've been shut out? I'm upset because this guy, two months out of nowhere, thinks he's the father of what could be my baby. What could be his baby? Where, we call the show. Been? We want to know. Is where have you been? I was just there two months ago with her. That's what you he keep saying. He was just less than 60 days ago. She said she moved That's without what you telling him. Saying, it was four months ago and he showed it up wasn't drunk. Four. That's when Mr. Belding gets into a heated argument with Miss Mars's new boyfriend. Mr. Belding felt like this dude had no right to claim the baby as his, as he just came out of nowhere within the last two months, and things got hectic. No, to not go anywhere. Because he was he was hung over. <clears throat> the only reason why he came over because he was hung over. Now we're getting to the truth now. So when you had him come over. No, he came no. over by himself. He knocked on my like window. Like I do all the in time the to go see her. In the middle of the night. Like he tries and to she get slams the door in my face. Just went there last week to see her. Moved like, without how, telling me last nothing. Week, last week, moved. You don't even know where we live. Not That's anymore, I just said. Miss Belding warns him that he won't be in her life for long since Miss Marsh has a tendency to go through men like toilet paper. Even Judge Lake is appalled by her words and after settling her down, asks Miss Marsh why Mr. Belding was even in the bed with her. Are not. Jordan Spot. Thank you. I already knew that. Thank you. Are her father. Thank you. That, that's my baby. That's our baby. That's my baby. Not yours. You think so? Mine. You think Stay so? Right here. Mine. Stay right I think here. so. Now it's sketchy that Miss Marsh says Mr. Belding wasn't present in her daughter's life, but at the same time says that she moved because they harassed her. Honestly, Judge Lake has heard enough and gets on with the paternity results. Doctor determined that is the truth. There you go, buddy. I told you. So, you know now. Yep. That they haven't had any sexual activities yet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so you can put that to rest. Despite his initial attitude towards Jordan, Mr. Belding is suddenly possessive towards her, and so is his mother. With that said, Judge Lake then moves on to reveal the lie detector test results. Miss Marsh was asked if she had a sexual relationship with Mr. Belding. Known for a man named Kimball to be my dad. I called him one day for the daddy-daughter dance, and instead of his response being, yes, I'll be there, it was, your mother's still lying to you not your dad, you need to go find your real dad. How cruel. <sighs> Today in court, Phelan Hannon is here to find out if David Dorsey is her biological father, since the man she knew as his father told her when she was 13 that he wasn't her father, and her mother on her deathbed told Miss Hannon that Mr. Dorsey was her actual father. After my mom's passing, I, had, I moved away, my grandmother got sick, so I came back. I was actually at work, walking down the hall, and she was calling me Melanie. Walking down the hall, Melanie, do you hear me talking to you? She got all the way close, and I'm like, ma'am, that's not my name. Melanie, but you're talking about Melanie Dorsey, right? And she's like, yeah. Miss Hannon was heartbroken as she grew up without any form of father figure growing up, which really took a toll on her mental health. Miss Hannon never knew the truth about her parents, but now she had an opportunity. Are her biological father? Yes, ma'am. You walk through the doors, you walk right past her, no hug. You didn't even really look at her, acknowledge her. I acknowledged her. I looked at her. You don't believe you're her biological father? Not really. 
No, Your Honor. She didn't think much about it when her mother revealed who her biological father was until one day at work, someone at work called her Melanie. And she said that wasn't her name, but in high school, people had mistaken her for Melanie Dorsey. Alan's mother, Veronica, we worked together. And Mr. Dorsey, I have seen him come to the job to bring her mom lunch. Her mom would talk about um, her baby daddy being David. He still looks the same. It's shocking when Mr. Dorsey says he doubts he's the father because he doesn't remember her mother at all. Miss Hannon says her mother told her they weren't in a relationship, just talked, and that he worked as a manager at a fast food place. Hannon has been called your daughter's name. Yeah. And... She resembles my daughter. Oh, you, you admit she resembles your daughter? When she was younger, yes. Her godmother remembers you. She remembers where you work. She remembers the woman talking about you and saying it was David Dorsey or David Watkins. Yes, ma'am. It still doesn't ring a bell in Mr. Dorsey's mind. Miss Alexander then recalls one day when Miss Hannon asked him about a guy named David Watkins, and she told her it was her dad. Even Judge Lake is confused because that's a different name. The paternity as it relates to Miss Hannon. Yes. I'm here to claim my sister. That's my sister. You know, um, I don't mean to disrespect my dad, but my dad was a Rolling Stone. Okay, so he was the man and like, he was very known on the North Side for being David Watkins, you know. Melody Dorsey gets called up to the courtroom and she confidently states that Miss Hannon is her sister, which is definitely nice to see. She explains how her father was a ladies man and was well known by multiple different women. My father, he was not in the state, you know, he was fighting his own demons at the time to even really want to, he's like, I don't know her. It was just so blatant. Nope, don't know her, never seen her. I don't know her. And I'm like, well, Dad, you know, you had the little party days because so you not remember. I know who I was with, I don't know her. So I said, okay. Judge Lake then calls in his daughter, Melanie, and she says she wants to claim her sister today because no disrespect to her dad, but he was known for getting around town back in the day, so the possibility of every high, she's his daughter. <laughs> if he's not, it's just me and my three kids, so. I love you. Okay, love stop, you just don't cry. Don't cry, it's gonna be okay, because like I told you before, you are my sister, period. Miss Hannon was rightfully concerned as she had sisters and other people to take care of. If she's not able to find the biological daughter, she will have to do everything herself. Melanie swiftly comes to support Miss Hannon, who is very respectful. Been the best for him, he didn't remember it. I'm sorry, I just, I'm, I, I don't remember having sex with your mom, I'm sorry. That's fine. And so you both submitted childhood photos to the court. Yeah. And I'd like to look at those. When you look at it, do you see a resemblance? Yeah. Melanie really has no doubts that Miss Hannon is her sister. Judge Lake asks Miss Hannon how she feels about Mr. Dorsey constantly says he doesn't remember her mom at all, even though she resembles Melanie so much. You are not the father. Sorry, you are my sister. I'm not me. 